welcome to Caribbean Focus. Caribbean Focus is the community voice of the college and the Caribbean Research Center at Medievals College, the weekly radio program highlighting Caribbean educational, cultural, and social affairs airs on 91.5 FM. I am your host, Hermina Marslin. My virtual guest today is no other than Raul Rios. Raul Rios is the organizer of Latinos New York um, NYC, a poet, a community activist. Welcome Raul to Caribbean Focus. Hi, I mean, welcome. Thank you. Thank you for having me. I appreciate this. It's an honor. It's an honor. Thank you. Uh, may you share a little bit about yourself and um, where you're from? Okay, when, okay, here we go. Uh, my descendants are from Puerto Rico. Uh, and even further that, I uh, just got my ancestry DNA back. So <laughs> I'm hyped because um, I have like 16%, uh, if I'm pronouncing it right, Batu, Western, African. So hmm. that's a whole different trip for me, you know, <laughs> in which I'm starting to explore. And like, I'm so hyped, I'm so hyped. So, Definitely, I'm from Africa. Definitely, my people are from Africa, from Puerto Rico. Um, uh, but born and raised in the Lower East Side, New York City, um, Manhattan. But I've lived just about in every borough um, in New York City, now in the Bronx. You know, you mentioned that um, you have more um, things to do as far as um, expanding and, and um, going on trips, um, your visits to um, Puerto Rico, are you um, traveling back and forth um, to Puerto Rico? How are you I, involved? I, I have, I have, I try to go to Puerto Rico at least twice a year. Um, one, of course, uh, you know, to go to the grave and pay my respects to my ancestors. Um, and second is to definitely connect uh, with Mother Earth um, and see how I can assist out there. You know, how can I assist my, ne my neighbor, um, my community? You know, just because I live here in the Bronx doesn't mean that I can't assist or help or, you know, somebody else in somewhere else. You know, let's, let's, let's delve um, into your role First, as the producer at the New Orleans Poets Cafe, um, how did that journey all begin? Seeing you on stage, <laughs> um, I used to visit before everything started. I visited. I saw you on stage. I saw a lot of people: Nagoma, uh, Raz, um, Helena D. Lewis, Nathan P. I've I, I saw so many people. I blessed, you know. La Bruja, all these people, John Chance, everybody, Eric Words. But I started with an organization called Latinos NYC and I needed for our mission and vision to get out. How better else to do it than in a poetry event? Love and it. so we, we, we started doing poetry events and we're getting out the word to the community about feeding the less fortunate in Tompkins Square Park or wherever we can, um, clothing them, making sure that uh, at least they got a bed and a pillow to sleep, at least for the night. You know, we'll worry about the next day when it comes. Um, so this is how we started spreading the word. Um, I got hired as a manager. Now I'm the community coordinator for them. Uh, even though through this pandemic, yes. uh, we still do a lot of virtual uh, poetry events. Excellent. And let us um, speak a little bit more about your organization, Latinos New York C, um, I'm, I'm sorry, Latinos NYC. Um, and, and that is centered around your personal mission uh, to make sure that the future of people, as you just mentioned, regardless of gender, culture or race, are secure and that they never go without a meal, clothing or a place to lay their head, uh, you know, delve a little bit more about your organization. 
Where do you begin? Here we go. An article was sent to me about an organization called Friends in Need in the Lower East Side in Tompkins Square Park that they fed the less fortunate every Saturday. Uh, so I volunteered. While I volunteered and started get, to get to know Friends in Need and the creator and the founder, my organization was already starting to be built uh, to do the same. So um, Friends in Need took us under the wing and we took over a weekend out of a month. We, matter of fact, we took over the third weekend of every month because now people who are on SSI or SNAP benefits are stretching what they have left. So to try to assist and help, we took the third Saturday of every month and we started feeding about 200, 250 people within an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, we did that for a couple of years, giving them clothes. Uh, we even, even, we had a connection with a foot doctor who came with his team and checked everybody's feet one, one weekend. So he was trying to expand to really help the less fortunate out there. Uh, and we still do it. We're just at a lower scale at the moment. Uh, this pandemic has hurt a lot of people, has hurt a lot of organizations, especially mom and pop organizations and, and uh, community group organizations, you know. Um, but we keep our fingers crossed. We keep our faith and we keep on trying to help everybody we can. In helping everybody that you can, and you mentioned about um, the pandemic, um, I mean, it affecting especially um, the small businesses. Um, do you see some sort of revival um, out of all of this? You know, um, do you see some sort of change? I mean, in continuing to keep in the faith and the prayers um, in continuing to help the less fortunate? Everything right now, the revival right now is, is definitely social media. Mm -hmm. um, lately, I, I've needed assistance, you know, for the community and I put it out there on the social media. So people start mailing stuff to me or, or donate um, to a certain link and it, it, it goes straight to me, straight to the person that needs it or the family that needs it or the child that needs it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just a middleman. There's a lot of people in, in, in our community. And let me let me say something. When I say our community, I mean the five boroughs. I mean all of New York. I mean, you know, we've sent, you know, books to North Dakota to the Native Americans because they they need it. And they reached out. So when this community is too big and 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 I take that weight. Yes. I take that weight and I feel the pain. You know, I've been there. I've been homeless. No, to, no, you know, it was my fault, but I've been there. So I know what it is to go to bed without a meal. I know what it is to see a day and you can't find your hit that you need because you're addicted. You know, and, and, and it's just, there's a need. There's a need up there, especially with this pandemic. We just got to unite together. You know, I think I put on Facebook this morning that the community needs to start helping themselves and stop and stop and stop leaning on the government. When I was a kid, my grandma used to tell me, listen, Tito, go to the backyard and get that, that, that plant or get that other plant and make my concoction and make a medication. Now we don't do that. We go to the pharmacy. Right. We need to go back to the way we was taught. We need to help our neighbor out, you know? I mean, there's not no more cup of sugar or, or a glass of milk. It's, we need to help. We need to help them out. And your organization, as you um, previously mentioned in helping the less fortunate, having um, the food, the, the, the foot doctor coming in um, to assist, how, I mean, and you did mention through social media, um, you are spreading the word, um, but how has been the receipt or um, somewhat people who are involved in your organization, the recipients, um, how, how, is, how has this been received? Um, 
by them. They love it that there's somebody out there that that, that cares enough to assist. Um, I'm happy with a thank you. You know, I'm I'm very happy with a thank you, and and, and it's you know it feels warm. You know, you and you know some of these. Here we go. John Chance Acevedo, who you know, as the poet Chance, the biggest host of New York City, New York, <laughs> now in Florida. Yes. I got James Peach McClory, another poet. I had Willie Barr, uh, Monica Martinez, and uh, Liza, who runs her own not-for-profit now at night, feeding the less fortunate, uh, mm -hmm. called Angels of the Dark. Um, mm -hmm. So these people spread out. These are my board members who spread out. Okay. Now doing their own thing. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm a one-man team here in hopes that the community hears my cry for the community. Therefore, you know what? If you can't be there, give it to them, send it to me. I'll get it to them. I have no problem. I have no problem playing. Listen, I used to be the middleman to a lot of drug dealers. Why not now to my own community? Excellent. And that passion of yours, Raul, it translates and you became the recipient of many awards, including the uh, humanita humanitarian award from um, your uh, Taino community um, for the work um, you continue to do throughout the community. In 2016, you were awarded best of the community. Um, congratulations on you. Um, your recognition. Um, you. How did you feel um, receiving um, these awards? It, 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 it's not my award. It might say my name. Yes. But there's a lot of people right next to me, behind me, in front of me, who dealt with my craziness and my crazy ideas. Um, so it's our award. It's ours. It belongs to the community. I was just one being vocal about yes. it. And people heard. And they're like, you know what? Before he gets out of hand, let's help him. <laughs> let's help him out let's help him out <laughs> he's doing the right thing you know and here i am a lot of people want to help but they can't so you know send a donation or send a gift and yes. believe me there's somebody that needs it right. i'll find that person that needs it and your um humanitarian award and your commitment, I mean, it translates even into the work that you do. Um, um, what's your um, current um, job position? Um, I, I work for, uh, <laughs> I work for Promesa, AKA Acacia is the motherland. Promesa is under Acacia. My title is CRA, meaning uh, Community Residential Aid. In reality, under that title, mm -hmm. um, I can say I'm a mental health specialist without the degree. Um, <laughs> although I got a bachelor's degree, yes. um, but without the mental health degree, um, I'm a counselor, case manager. What we try to do um, is keep our residents uh, homeostasis, chemically imbalanced um, with their medication, mm -hmm. their therapy, um, going to the psych sessions, you know, in, in hopes in the long run that they can live a more fruitful, independent life and they can live on their own. The stars are definitely um, aligned um, for you in your line of work, um, in your commitment um, to helping the community. Um, you know, just touching briefly again um, to Puerto Rico, do you think there is also um, a need and where do you think that need should come from you know in 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 assisting does puerto rico need a need yes they still uh uh building from maria um they're not fully back 100 percent um yeah puerto rico is in dire need let me say dire need certain mm -hmm. sections are in dire need mm -hmm. um where, you know what, if they can get rid of one thing or a couple other things, I would say the 1920 Jones Act, that'd be a start. 
how can we sell you our products then you sell it back to us at a double rate in taxes once again so um that's a little history yeah they can get rid of the jones act <laughs> if the government wants to step in i mean we have a lot of all-stars that live in pr and i mean all-stars like hollywood all-stars you know musical all-stars um i don't know maybe they need to chip in chip in and um does your organization translate um um or connects with pr um or is there is that something that you're um that you're looking forward to in in bridging the connection with um your organization here and pr we when we when maria hit um Latinos NYC was part of a big organization called 100 Hispanic Men. We fell into the, under their umbrella. And um, at that time, Jay-Z lent us one of his planes and we loaded it up with so much water. There's so much stuff that was donated. And that was a start. Um, I do have connections. We do have connections out there. Um, we just need to get, you know, everything boils down to funding. Mm -hmm. you, you can have the heart and the inspiration and the aspiration to assist other people, but without funding, you know, it's only, it's only a, 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 a plan on paper, you know, everything needs funding. Yeah. And like I said before, the community needs to start stepping up. And even before um, the um, pandemic, um, of course, as you mentioned, this is where you met me um, at the New Rican um, Poets Cafe. And of course, now that um, we we are experiencing, you know, partial lockdown um, and limitations um, to gatherings, um, what are your thoughts on um, the New Rican um, Poets Cafe and you know and its future? Um, I mean, I know you're doing, we're, you know, you, as you mentioned, doing um, poetry um, online, but the, um, the building itself and, you know, what it stands for, um, you know, where do you see um, its future? That's a good question to ask. In my personal opinion, we hope to be open one day. Uh, we cannot solidify that day at the present moment, but the plans is to open. Yeah. Um, I was just there uh, uh, about two weeks ago. I went inside and I took a picture. And when I went from the back and I came up right from behind to go right on stage, the microphone was there and I had to take the picture. And I felt everybody's words and everybody who, you know, who stood on that stage. Yes. I felt their presence. You know, I've been there 12 years. Um, of course, Gentrification is everywhere. Mm -hmm. uh, just notice the building right next to the new yo that's being built and almost finished. Um, we, we plan to hope in one day. We continue virtually. You know, you got Eric Words on Monday. Mm -hmm. I think you got Caridad de la Luz, a.k.a. Uh, AKA la Bruja on Thursdays. Um, and then you got other independent artists and producers who are still, you got Helena D. Lewis. Uh, doing her events as well, Eric Crow. Um, there was just one, yeah. Um, so there's a lot of independent artists agreeing with uh, Jason Quinones, who's the GM, uh, to bring these virtual shows. Uh, we plan to open up one day. We just can't, you know, say what day right. because of the pandemic, you know. So please continue to support us. Please continue to support us, you know, the New York region. Please, we love you, you, you know, you, we love your love. You know, we love it. And you've had famous, um, you know, artists um, touch the stage. Um, I recall a photo um, with you and um, Jill Scott. So <laughs> 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 oh my God. Yes, Jill Scott, my favorite photo of all time. It makes yeah. some people jealous though. Uh, <laughs> But yes, she was there. Um, that day I also met uh, Conan. Conan okay. was there. Mm. Um, those are other celebrities, Spike Lee was there. Uh, there's a, a couple of other ones, but the energy of Jill Scott, 
just yeah. drew me and I'm like, sis, I need to take a picture with you. She's <laughs> like, come on. No hesitation, come on. Yes. And, and, and it's, it's, it's so humbling to see people like that and, and down to earth, down to earth. You know, and, and what you are involved in, you know, do carry vibrant um, um, energy, you know, and I too recall um, going to um, the New Eureka Poet Cafe and um, meeting other um, amazing um, um, poets. Um, this is where I met um, Nathan P. And, you know, it, it does carry um, this energy that is much needed because um, with poetry itself and you also um, being a poet, you can speak on the possibilities in poems and, you know, having that space to meet and to express yourself um, is phenomenon within itself. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I don't know if people gave me that title poet. I don't know. I write. It makes sense to me. I'm happy. <laughs> you know, maybe if I get published one day, it, it'll make sense. But <laughs> yeah. um, I write about what I see, what I've lived, what I continue to do. Um, I don't know, it's a, it's a form of therapy. Yes. It's definitely a form of therapy, especially now through through uh, mm -hmm. this pandemic, because I did uh, test positive on May 6th uh, last year with the COVID. Yeah, sorry. So uh, I went through it mentally, you know, while I'm, quarantine in my room, working quarantined and still going through this mental thing. Um, didn't have no type of side effects or nothing, but I just had it. Yeah. Um, so writing definitely does help. Was therapeutic. And, and, and very do, you, therapeutic. Very do, do you see now that, you know, as you mentioned, um, it continues online, do you see a, a shift in energy or the dynamic from being in person to an online performance? If you're about energy, you can get energy anywhere you want. Even through this meeting we're having right now and being live on, on Facebook. Um, it's a difference though when you're actually in front of that person and you vibing with them mm. and you're vibing like right now, social media over the internet, because this is the new, the new, new. Yes. How long are we going to be doing this? You know, I, I, I hug my kids when I see them. I hug my grandkids when I see them. Um, as a human, I think we need that touch once in a while. You know, that's what we're told to go out in the sun for at least 15, 20 minutes a day, that energy to feel the warmth. Um, I definitely miss hugging or getting hugs, um, especially at the New Year on a Friday night. You know how many hugs I used to get? <laughs> <laughs> that line was so long, unbelievable. So many hugs, so many hugs. So I miss that. I, I, I personally miss it. Um, energy can transcend all over. It's just up to the person who's sending it and the other person who's receiving it. Um, and how you receive that energy that's being put out in the universe. Um, yeah, this is a new thing. How long is it going to last? I don't know. In, con in, in continuing this, tran in, in transiting and transmitting um, and transcending um, in where energy is concerned, um, for those who would like to be involved um, in contributing um, to your organization or become, um, you know, part of the organization, um, again, could you um, tell our listening and viewing audience um, where you can be reached? Awesome. I'm all over social media. You can find me in IG. Listen, my name is Raul Rios. It's, it's simple. R A U L R I O S. Or you can look up Latinos NYC um, on social media. I'm, I'm there. Um, excuse my rant and raves, uh, but sometimes I have to, to check the community's balance. 
yeah. you know, because at times um, we forget that we even really lynch ourselves at times, you know, and that was something taught back many moons ago and yet it still happens. Um, so I'm all over the Facebook right now. You can get me under Raul Rios, Raul K. Rios or Latinos NYC. Um, donations, I, I don't accept donations every day, but if I put something up there uh, that I need it, you'll see the link and you can follow that, you know. Um, yeah, I just, if there's a need, if somebody calls to me and tells me, listen, Raul, somebody needs, I'll investigate a little bit. You know, sometimes there's some flim flams out there, you know, um, and you got to do what you got to do. So I'll investigate and then I'll put it out in the media. Lovely. And if people want to help, just inbox me, let me know, and I'll let you know how to continue. Raul, you are committed to the work that you do. Um, your passion speaks through. Um, I want to um, thank you for um, joining me on Caribbean Focus, just touching the surface on what you do and um, who you are. And I like that term, you know, this transcending of energy, um, which you definitely bring. And I will again, thank you for your commitment thank to you. helping the community. And thank you, Omega Ever College. Thank you. <laughs> You're welcome. So thank you very much, Raul, for joining me on Caribbean Focus. I look forward to um, I'm having you on again um, to, again, tell us um, what you're up to um, with your organization. And um, again, letting the viewing and listening audience um, know a little bit more about the organization and continuing to, um, um, to be involved. Call me, I'm there for you. I'm there. I'm Thank there. you. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank Love you so everybody. Much. Thank you. This has been Caribbean Focus. I am your host, Hermina Marslin. Thanks for listening and watching. Bye-bye. See you soon.